Hi, my name is Robert Melmichuk, and welcome to What I Do. How would you like to become smarter than all of your bosses? That was a statement Steve Scott heard from a close friend after Steve had lost nine jobs in his first six years after attending college. Rising to the challenge and following some solid advice, on his 10th job, Steve and his partners built more than a dozen multi-million dollar businesses from scratch and achieved billions of dollars in sales. What was that advice? You'll find out from the author of the book, The Richest Man Who Ever Lived. Steve, welcome to What I Do. Hey, thanks, Rob. It's a pleasure to have hey, you here with us It's great to be today. here, thanks. Listen, Steve, your story is fascinating. In fact, it's almost unbelievable. But what I'd like to know is this, after you graduated from college, mm -hmm. what wasn't going right for Steve as a businessman? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing was going right. Everything was going wrong. I, I had a marketing degree from a good university. I uh, thought I was going to go out and burn up the turf, really become an ad man, because and, and, that was my major. Uh, but no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't succeed. In fact, I, I lost two jobs in short order, like within a few months. Mm -hmm. And job number three was a real job. That was a marketing job. So I really worked hard, tried as hard as I could, worked for nine months. I was hired on probation. And nine months into it, my boss called me into his office, and I thought, okay, here comes the raise. And he said, have a seat. And he said, Steve, you are the single greatest disappointment in my entire career. You will never succeed in marketing. You've got 20 minutes to clean out your desk. But then something happened. Uh, actually, after I lost job number six, Gary Smalley, 1975, my best friend in life, still is. We, I wrote his first two books with him. And Gary was visiting me and he said, Steve, just like you said in your opening, how would you like to be wiser than all your bosses? And I said, yeah, right. He said, no, there's something you could do if you do it for two years. In two years, you'll be wiser than all your bosses. And in five years, you'll probably be a millionaire. He said, 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs, 31 days in the month, every day read the mm. chapter of the day, but with pencil and paper in hand and write down the wisdom and insights you gain and apply them that day. He said, if you'll do that for two years, it'll take you through Proverbs 24 times. And he said, I promise it'll change everything about your life. And that's exactly what happened. Steve, there's um, so many different ways and means today, motivational mm -hmm. books and speakers, et cetera, that give us opportunity to be able to take you from where you are right. to where you can be. Right. What you believe is turning your life around was built upon, of course, the Proverbs of King Solomon. Right. Is it true? And the grace of God. And the grace of God. Really in a big way. I can't even tell you how big that mm -hmm. is. But is it, is it true that if I'm where I am, and that may not be a great place, mm -hmm. if I apply what Solomon teaches, will that lead me to success? And by Absolutely. that I don't mean millions of dollars, I just mean finding fulfillment and purpose Absolutely. in life. Absolutely. Not, not even a question. You see, Solomon revealed laws of life. Okay, now if I drop this book, every single time I drop it, it's gonna fall. Why? Because there's a little law called gravity. Doesn't matter how I drop it, I can drop it this way, that way, it's always gonna fall. Same thing with the laws of life that Solomon revealed. They're laws of life. One of the greatest battles that we all face is where do I begin? So from your life experiences, explain to us a treasure of wisdom from King Solomon that you believe every person needs, whether they're a CEO of a major company, or just a person getting started in business? Okay, great question. The, um, Solomon said, do you see a man diligent in his business? He will stand, not bow, he will stand before kings. In other words, diligence is such a rare commodity that when a man brings it into his business life, that he will see such extraordinary outcomes that he will actually be brought into the king's council. And it's, it's that rare. We don't understand what diligence is in our culture. People think it's persistence, it's hard work. That, those are tiny little parts of it. So the first place to start is learning what does he mean when he says diligent. One of the ones that I remember reading in your book is, and can you just maybe use this one as the last one to comment on, is the whole subject of hope. Right. There's so many people today that feel so hopeless. Right. And um, people watching right now, you know, they're maybe doing good, but yet could do better. And there's that sense of hopelessness in them. Right. Yeah. Could you share about that you for bet. a moment? In fact, that's what turns most relationships south, is there's a, a proverb that Solomon gives us. He says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And when our heart gets sick, what do we lose? We lose energy, we lose productivity, creativity, we lose motivation. Ultimately, we lose trust and then commitment. 
Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But hope as he talks about it is not hope as we think about it. We think about hope as a wish or a dream. Mm -hmm. Hope, the, 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 the biblical definition of hope is a well-founded, confident belief that that which is promised or committed will be performed in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, mm -hmm. well-founded. Well, for me, my hope for life has to have a foundation. Mm -hmm. That foundation is Jesus Christ and what he taught me, mm -hmm. what he teaches the world. Mm -hmm. That's where all my hope comes from. Mm -hmm. It's not just a wish, or, mm -hmm. but I know what his words say. Mm -hmm. And his words provide a rock, a foundation of hope. Mm -hmm. Now I have to add to that foundation confident belief that that which he promises he'll deliver. Steve, thank you so much thank for that you, such Rob. good advice. Well, thank you, Bob, for being for a special me. guest on What I Do. If you'd like to find out how to obtain a copy of the book, The Richest Man Who Ever Lived, visit our website at crossroads.ca slash what I do.